Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm glad you all could join us here today. My name is Braden Leisure. Uh, if you've ever called into our support line, we may have spoken before. I'm part of the CATI support team. Uh, we're going to go over some surfacing here in SOLIDWORKS. This is kind of geared towards maybe beginners or people maybe just starting out or curious about surfacing. Uh, but there should be some interesting things here and there that some of you advanced users might be able to take away from this. So what I'm going to go over here, we're going to start off with going over what defines a solid. And this is important so we can differentiate between solid geometry and surface geometry in SOLIDWORKS. Next, we're going to go over how we can identify surface bodies in the SOLIDWORKS user interface. Then we're going to go over one of the surfacing commands that I really enjoy. It's called delete face. If you've never used it before, hopefully this should show you why it's one of my favorite tools. And then lastly, we're going to go over a workflow example of creating an electronic shell case using some surfacing tools. So what defines a solid? There are two primary traits that are going to define a SOLIDWORKS, uh, a solid within SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the first and more obvious one that most of you probably already know is that the geometry has to be fully enclosed. It needs to be completely watertight in order for it to be able to be considered a solid. Uh, the other one that's a little less intuitive is that there's a rule that every solid must follow, and that's that every single edge inside that solid is the boundary between exactly two faces. And you'll see down here in the bottom left, we have a cube with faces A, B, C, and edges red, green, and blue. If, for instance, we look at the blue edge, it is the boundary for only faces A and B, no more and no less. And you go around and you find that that's the true case for all of these edges. If we remove the face B, and then we, have, we see over here, we look at the blue edge. The blue edge is only the boundary for face A and no other face. SOLIDWORKS calls this an open edge, and this can only happen if you're, with, if you're working with surface geometry. Now, how we identify surface bodies in SOLIDWORKS, the easiest and primary way is by looking at your feature manager tree on the left-hand side in SOLIDWORKS. Um, you'll see that as soon as you have surface bodies, a surface body folder will turn on, and you'll see surface bodies, and there will be a number in parentheses. This number represents how many surface bodies you have. Another good way to identify surface bodies in SOLIDWORKS is by using the Check Entity tool. Um, this is found in your Evaluate tab, and we'll go over this in one of our examples here. Um, this is primarily for finding open surfaces. So remember how I said certain edges are considered open edges if they're the only boundary, if they're on, only one face as a boundary. Um, this will find open surfaces. If you have a fully enclosed surface body, it will not show up in the Check Entity tool. You'll only be able to identify it from the Surface Bodies folder here. So talking about our first tool, the Delete Face tool, this is a really useful tool when you don't have a feature history tree, um, as you can, you can interact with your dumb solid by deleting the faces and simplifying things. Uh, it can defeature things such as deleting holes. Uh, it's also one of our primary commands for transitioning from a solid body to a surface body. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into SOLIDWORKS here. And we have our part. And the first thing, before we jump into the delete face, let's go ahead and evaluate what we have. Over on the left-hand side here, as I mentioned, we have our surface bodies folder. So we know that this part is a surface body. It is not a solid body. The other giveaway is that we have this surface imported feature as our first feature. Whenever you have an imported part, you'll have imported features. You'll have an imported feature for every single body inside of the part. Um, in this case, it says surface imported, so we know it's a surface part, a uh, surface body. If it was just a solid body, it would simply say imported one. The other thing we can do, as I mentioned, up in the Evaluate tab, we have our Check tool right up here. If we run the check, we see that Open Surface option is turned on by default, and we run the check and we see that we have an open surface result. If we click on this result, it'll actually tell us where our gap is. We have this little yellow arrow that points to our gap right there. So in this case, we want to we wanna close this guy up. We want to close this gap so that we don't have a surface body anymore, because we want to start out as a solid body. Um, one thing we can do is, since this is an imported part, we have the option of import diagnostics. If we right click this imported feature, we can select Import Diagnostics. This is a very important thing to run whenever you're working with imported geometry. Um, you generally always want to run it, as it will catch any faulty faces that could lead to geometry errors later, um, as well as any gaps in your surface geometry. In this case, I'm going to 
heal all, and it'll heal that gap. And we say OK. And you'll notice that our surface bodies folder disappeared, and our imported feature changed to that blue cube that I was mentioning. So at this point, we've transitioned to a solid body. By default, SOLIDWORKS does not show the solid body folder if you only have a single solid body and no other bodies. If you want to change this, you can go up to your gear right up here for your options. Go into Feature Manager. And these are all the different folders that can show up in your Feature Manager. Solid bodies and surface bodies are set to automatic. I'm going to just go ahead and set these to show so we can keep track of our bodies a little bit better here. And you'll see that we do, in fact, have one solid body. Now, the issue is import diagnostics might not always be able to close your gaps. So I'm going to undo that import diagnostics. And the other way we can identify the gap, you'll see here, there's a little bit of blue down here. If we zoom in, you'll see that SOLIDWORKS has highlighted all of these edges in blue. This is because any open edge in SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS will highlight with blue, making it easier for you to identify at a glance where your open surfaces are. In this case, for us to close this manually, we're going to need to use some surfacing tools. Um, in this case, it's going to be a rather simple surface loft. I'm going to go back to my surfacing toolbar, and we're going to do lofted surface. If you've used lofts before, it's very similar to the feature-based loft. Um, the only difference is we're lofting a surface instead of a, a solid or a closed profile. Um, if you've never used a loft before, essentially what we're doing is we're going from one selection to another selection and creating a surface in between those two selections as a loft. There are additional options here in the surface loft to better control it if your loft is a little more complex. In this case, we have a fairly straight shot, so we're not going to address any of those extra options. Um, in this case, we're just going to make our first selection for our profile. And this is very important for all lofts in SOLIDWORKS. Notice where I'm selecting my profile. I selected it over here on the right-hand side. If for my next selection, I decide to select it over on the opposite side, it's going to loft from my selection to my other selection. So we've got our profile a little backwards here. So it's very important that when we make our profile selections that we are selecting in a similar place to our first profile. Now we'll make our selection. We'll see it goes from the correct end to the correct end. We get our preview. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and accept this. And you'll see now we still have a blue edge because it's still an open surface because these are two separate surface bodies now. You'll see our surface bodies folder now has two entities in it. What we want to do next is we want to combine them into a single surface body. To do this, SOLIDWORKS gives us a command called knit surface found in our surfacing toolbar right up here, knit surface. With this tool, we can create a selection. So we select both of our surface bodies. And what it's going to do is it's going to combine those into a single body. There are some extra options here. We're not going to go into those just yet. We'll come back to this. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Accept. Now we went from two surface bodies to a single surface body. And what you'll find interesting here is that if we go back to our Evaluate tab, and we go back to the Check command, and we run our check again, we get no results. This is because we don't have any open surfaces. We knitted that gap. But we are still a surface body. So at this point, we are a fully enclosed surface body. Not quite solid yet. We need to make one last jump to go from surface body to solid body. There are a couple ways we can do this. Uh, one of the first ways is by using the thicken command found in our surfaces. So right here, we have thicken. And we'll select our surface body. And you'll notice that we now get this new option here that appears. This option only appears if you have a fully enclosed surface body. And that is to create solid from enclosed volume. So with that checked, we say OK. And we'll see that we are no longer a surface body, and we are back into our solid body environment. Now that's one way to do it. But as I mentioned before, there are a couple extra options in our knit surface command. So I'm going to get rid of that thicken. I'm going to go back into our surface knit and edit that feature. And you'll see there's actually a checkbox already for us that says Create Solid. That Create Solid option is only available so long as your selection is a fully enclosed surface body knit. So you'll see here, right now it's grayed out. As soon as I add the other to my selection here, we're able to check this box for Create Solid. And we say OK. And it accomplished the same exact thing as that thicken tool. Now, with all that out of the way, we're going to talk about the delete face command, the reason we came into this part. Um, if you look at this part, there's a giant hole in it. If you're familiar with what this is, that hole does not belong there. 
Um, maybe it's there to show off a tool during a webcast. Maybe it's there because somebody was so frustrated with their physical cartridge that drilling a hole through the physical cartridge wasn't enough. They had to drill it through the CAD program as well. So regardless, we don't want this hole here. So we're going to use the delete face command found up here in your surfaces, delete face. There are three different modes we can use for delete face. For the purposes of this webcast, we're just going to focus on the first two here. And in this particular case, we're going to use delete and patch. Um, I'll explain what's, what's going on here in a moment, but with the delete and patch mo option, we're going to select our cylindrical surfaces here that define this hole. And we're going to say, OK. And at this point, like magic, we have just deleted a hole even without the whole feature being in the feature tree. So what's happening? We're going to do the same thing on this notched corner here. Say we don't need a notched corner anymore for our new design. So we're going to go back into delete face, delete and patch mode. I'm going to select these two surfaces. And what SolidWorks is doing is it's deleting those two faces. And then for all of the edges that are the boundary of those faces, it is extending those edges until they meet, and then it trims off the excess. So based on this selection, this is going to completely close off our corner here. So I'm going to say OK, and it deletes that. So we can also do it for even slightly more complex areas. We're going to say Delete Face, make our selection of all these faces in here. It's going to extrude all the edges, so this should flatten out. We can even do more than one feature at a time. So I'm also going to do this indented area here, add that to our selection. We say OK, and it's gone. So we're defeaturing our part. Uh, I already have a selection set defined for the rest, just so we can do that rather quickly. Same thing, delete face, delete and patch. All of those are gone. So that's one way we can use the delete surface, the delete face command. Um, now, if you'll notice, all the things that I've been doing have been on the outside surfaces of this part. Since this is a shelled part, we have an inside that has been untouched. At this point, we could do the same exact thing on the inside and do a bunch of delete surfaces, uh, delete face commands, but I, we're going to do a little trick. What I know is that this face right here is the only face separating our outside surfaces and inside surfaces. So once again, I'm going to use delete face on this face, except this time I'm just going to delete it. So when I do this, something interesting happens. You'll notice that we're no longer a solid body. We've gone back to surface bodies. This makes sense because I just created a gap in the solid geometry with the delete face command. The other thing is, since that bridge between the inside and outside surfaces is gone, SOLIDWORKS has no choice but to separate it into two bodies. So we have our outside surface body and our inside surface body. What I can do from here is I can right click our inside surface body and say delete keep body. And we're just going to get rid of all of those inside surfaces with that command. At this point, what we can do is we can now cap the end, create it as a solid, and then we can update our design on the outside and then reshell our part. So you'll see here we have the familiar blue lines indicating that these are open edges. I'm going to right click this edge and say select open loop. This selects everything in the loop that is an open edge, so we can easily select everything at the end here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a planar surface command with our selection. So with everything selected, I'm going to go up to our surface toolbar and say planar surface. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to create a flat planar surface, and it is going to be bound by our selection. So this selection is going to be the perimeter of our new flat surface. So with this, I'll go ahead and say OK. We get our new surface. We're back up to two surface bodies. So we're just going to repeat what we did earlier. We're going to say knit face or knit surface, select our surface bodies and use that same option to create solid. And with that, we're back to our solid body. Uh, and from here, we can make our design changes and then reshell, and everything should be good. So to review what we did, uh, we started off by identifying whether we had surface or solid bodies using the feature tree and the evaluate tool. We closed the gap that we found that the evaluate tool pointed out to us. We used the delete and patch mode to defeature our part and get rid of a hole. And then finally, we used the delete face command to separate the inside and outside surfaces so that we could cap and close our model. 
The next thing we're going to go over is just a shell casing example for an electronics casing. Um, in this case, our workflow is going to be delete face, swept face, trim, and thicken. Uh, and this will make more sense once we get into our part here. So I have a boss extrude ready to go here. Um, I also have already created some sketches for the purpose of creating our, our swept surface as well as some of our cutouts. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our delete face command. And we're just going to leave it on the delete mode. We're going to delete one of our faces. I'm going to delete the bottom face here. And this is going to transition our part from being a solid body to a surface body. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to change a bit of the shape of this part by adding a swept surface. So I'm going to go up here to the surfaces and say swept surface. If you've ever used a sweep command before, it's very similar to the feature-based sweep, except we're using an open profile instead of a closed profile. So here I have my profile. Um, and if you've never used the sweep command before, what we're doing is basically we have our profile defined. And this is going to sweep along a path to create a surface. The path I def have defined is right here. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We can see from our preview what we're going to end up with. Everything looks good. So we're going to go ahead and accept that. Now we're up to two surface bodies. We have our original one and our new swept surface. Now what we want to do is there are some elements of each that we want to keep and some elements of each body that we want to trim away. For this, we're going to use the trim surface command. So up in our surfaces toolbar, we go to trim surface, found right here. And we have two different modes for our trim surface. In this particular case, we're going to use the mutual trim type. And the reason we're using this is because both surface bodies here are going to act both as the trim tool and as the surface body being trimmed. Since they're both taking on both roles, we're going to use the mutual trim type. I'm going to select the surfaces that will be participating in this. And then down here, we have our selections of pieces to keep or pieces to remove. In this case, I'm going to find it more convenient to remove selections, um, as those are more accessible to me. And once we click in this blue box here, you'll see that when we hover over, it's going to highlight what it's going to remove. I need to remove all of this excess outside part and then this little wedge on the top here. What we see is what we'll be left with. Um, what we have been selected what has automatically been hidden and will be trimmed once we accept the trim surface command. So we'll accept that. And we've got our resulting surface body here. And you'll notice that we did, in fact, go from two surface bodies to a single surface body. And this is because when you use the mutual trim type in the trim surface command, SolidWorks will automatically knit the resulting surface bodies into a single surface body. The next thing we do is we're going to do our cutout. I already have my sketch defined for our cutout here. And what we're going to do is the same trim surface command. In this case, instead of a mutual trim type, we're going to do a standard trim type. This is because our sketch is only acting as a trim tool. It is not going to be trimmed itself. So for our trim tool selection, we select our sketch. And now I could very easily, for our remove selections, go in and remove all the parts that we don't want. But what's going to be easier in this case is, is if we change it to keep selections, I'm only going to keep the outside part. Everything that is not selected to keep gets trimmed away. We say OK. And at this point, we have the surface body of our shell casing. And what we're going to do is the very last step is transition back from a surface body into a solid body again. And to do that, we're going to go back to our thicken command. So I'm going to go ahead and say thicken select our surface body. And you'll notice that originally we did a thicken command on, on, a, on a fully enclosed surface body. In this case, we have an open surface body. So it's just going to add thickness as the, as the tool suggests here. We'll set our thickness and say OK. And at this point, our casing is finished. So just to review, we started with delete face to transition from a solid body to a surface body. We added a swept face to add a little more definition to our part and change the shape. And then trim surface to trim away the parts that we don't need and keep the parts that we do need, as well as trim away some of the cutouts. And finally, we thickened our part to turn it back into a solid. And with that, that's all I have to show you guys today. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions.
here we go. Here's a couple. Um, thinking command. We're, there was a merge option. What does that do since you only have a single body? I'm assuming no. nothing yeah. except for if it, there is multiple bodies that, that were touching it at the time. Exactly. So the merge result, this is very similar to the merge result in a boss extrude, for instance, where if you are working in a multi-body environment, if you have any other bodies that your resulting body will intersect, then it will combine it into a single body. Which is nice. But, that wasn't there a while ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which in this case, since it's a single body, that option won't do anything for us. Exactly. So I know this is only about 25, 30 minutes, so it's, it's kind of a get a couple tips, couple tricks, get in, get out. Um, we're going to be doing some more in-depth stuff coming up here in the near future, so there'll, there'll be some more presentations on searching in the future. I'd like to thank everybody for attending the webcast. I want to thank everybody for attending. We've got four more presentations left out of these sessions, um, two tomorrow and two on Friday, so feel free to sign up for those and join at your leisure. Thank you very much, and have a great week.